Have you ever taken a really good look at a piece of furniture built by a master craftsman? Notice the smooth, flat surfaces, the precision with which the pieces are joined together, how everything fits just right. The skill of this craftsman is evident in his work, particularly his skill in the measuring and squaring steps. His tools are simple. For measuring, there are several types of one and two foot bench rules. These are marked in feet and inches, the standard units of measurement. The rules are marked in halves, quarters, eighths, and sometimes sixteenths of an inch. The zigzag or carpenter's rule is used to measure longer lengths. It is six or eight feet long and folds to about six inches. The steel tape is compact and has a small catch on the end that slips over the end of a board, making it easy to pull out the tape. Because it is flexible, it is particularly useful for measuring curved surfaces. A tri-square is useful for squaring small stock. Its blade is six or eight inches long and the handle about four inches. The handle is thicker than the blade, making the square convenient to use. The framing square is almost indispensable to the craftsman. It is used for laying out lines and squaring larger surfaces. And turned on edge, it can be used to check for high and low spots on a piece of stock. A sliding T-bevel is used for laying out angles other than 90 degrees. It can be set to any desired angle by using a protractor. You may set the sliding T-bevel at a 45 degree angle by using equal distances along the blade and tongue of a framing square. For accuracy, check the setting after you tighten the holding screw. For marking stock, you need a sharp, hard pencil for ordinary work. A knife should be used for more accurate work. A scratch awl is useful for marking locations for holes to be bored. Dividers and trammel points are used to scribe arcs and to transfer measurements. The marking gauge is used for laying out lines parallel to an edge. It has a spur which must be kept sharp. To set the gauge, loosen the thumb screw and slide the head to the correct setting. For accuracy, check the actual distance between the spur and face plate with a rule. Tighten the thumb screw and again check the setting with the rule. This habit will ensure accurate work. Hold the face plate securely against the edge of the stock. Carefully push the gauge along the piece, scribing a line as you go. Select stock for your project carefully. It should have a minimum of imperfections. Before using a piece of stock for a project, it must be squared to ensure good appearance and close fit. First, cut the stock to approximate length. Check with a straight edge to see if the stock is warped. If there are high spots, mark them and plane them off first. Your stock may have a lengthwise twist called wind. Check this by sighting along the stock or by putting it on a flat surface. If it has wind, it will rock on opposite corners. Mark any high corners. Select the better side or face. This will be the working face. Secure the stock for planing. Plane the surface with the grain, planing off the high spots first. Check the piece frequently using a square held on edge. On wide or glued up stock, it may be advisable to plane across the grain in order to get the surface smooth. When this first surface is smooth, mark it working face. Next, select the better edge of the stock. This will become the working edge. Check it for high spots first.
Smooth and straighten this edge. Check with the tri-square to see that it is perpendicular to the working face. Check with a straight edge to see that it is straight. When the working edge has been made straight and perpendicular to the working face, mark it working edge and select the better end of the material. Plane this end using some method to prevent splitting the stock at the end of the stroke. Plane until it is straight and at right angles, both to the working edge and to the working face. This then is the working end. Mark it. Measuring from the working end, lay out the exact length for the finished piece. Measure along the top of one edge, keeping the rule on edge for accuracy. Mark with a sharp, hard pencil or a knife. Using the tri-square or framing square, square a line across the face. Be sure the square is held firmly against the working edge as you do this. Hold the square against the working face to mark the working edge. Holding the square snugly against the working edge, mark the other face. With the square against the working face, mark the last edge so that the mark goes all the way around the stock. Use a cross cut or back saw to cut the stock to length. Leave about one eighth inch for trimming. Plane down to the mark, making sure that the end is perpendicular to the working edge and working face, and that it is straight. The width must be measured from the working edge. If your stock is too wide to use the marking gauge, Measure the width at both ends of the piece, keeping the rule on edge for increased accuracy. Remember to measure from the working edge. Using a straight edge, mark a line indicating the correct width. Use a rip saw to cut off waste stock. Do not saw closer than 1 8 inch to the line. Leave this much for trimming. You may make a line to saw by. This might be called the rough sawing line. Plane this edge as you plane the working edge, checking frequently to see that the edge is perpendicular to the working face and to the ends. Carefully set the marking gauge to the correct thickness. Check the gauge to ensure accuracy. Holding the face plate against the working face, mark both edges and both ends. Plane the last surface as you did the working face. Plane down to the line, checking frequently to be sure the surface is both smooth and straight. The stock is now squared. The ends are perpendicular to the edges and faces. The edges are perpendicular to the faces and are straight. The faces are smooth. The measurements are all correct. Remember the order in which stock is correctly squared. First, the working face. Second, working edge. Third, working end. Fourth, opposite end, establishing the length. Fifth, opposite edge, establishing the width. And last, the final surface, 
establishing the thickness. Learn as much as you can about your measuring and squaring tools. Study their uses and limitations. Make a habit of using them accurately. Square the stock for your projects as perfectly as you can. Only by doing these things can you build into your work the precision fits, the clean lines, and the smooth surfaces that are the real mark of a true craft.